Welcome back to the Grinning Dragon. It's been a while since I have kind of updated my YouTube page, but here I go. I've been very active on my TikToks lately. And, uh, well, today I'm going to be showcasing a couple of the speed paints here. We got Crusader Skin and Yellow, uh, well, Zella Yellow. I was able to get these uh, from my local game store, Paper Plastic Sports. If you're in the Shorewood area, go ahead, please check them out. They're just a nice little uh, game store. Um, they also sell some... Uh, frisbee golf supplies if you're into frisbee golf um but yeah owner is really nice uh they usually have events a lot of card game events um i know they have warhammer on mondays so go ahead and check them out if you're ever in the plainfield shorewood area of illinois uh very good area but anyway i got some marvel crisis portal call figures i've had for a while decided to paint them up here now they are uh base coated in black and then dry brushed with a gray. I'll show you which gray I used. I used this kind of ghost gray. Uh, it's more of just a less blue, more actual gray on there. Most grays will have one more blue there, but it's a very light gray, almost almost a white, but not quite. So I'm gonna go ahead and uh, try this paint onto Wolverine here and Sabretooth, and then uh, let you know how it goes once I get that all painted, okay? Give me one sec. Okay, so first thing I noticed once I got on my wet palette, I'm gonna kind of bring you up here so you can see. It actually is kind of red. Uh, this is zealot yellow there. It's actually kind of reddish. So I'm a little concerned there, but you know, I'll give it a shot and just kind of paint Wolverine with it. Um, ideally, just trying to go with like classic X-Men uh, 90s cartoon with yellow and blue. Um, so the idea is I don't really like painting bright colors. So hopefully this one will be easier to paint uh, on the bright colors right away. And then I'll kind of go over and hit like the, the lines in black. So with uh, Asmodee's uh, and uh, Atomic Games' is, uh, Crisis Protocol, what's beautiful about these models as well is the, the detail. The detail is quite gorgeous. Um, again, the price point is really well uh, co compared to Games Workshop nowadays. Um, it, it, it's just gotten kind of obscene with some of the pricing now for uh, normal Warhammer and stuff. But if you're looking for an alternative game, uh, Marvel Crisis Protocol is pretty good. Um, as you can see, the models are really nicely detailed. They're pretty big too, so I'll grab like a... Let me see if I got like a thousand suns I didn't paint yet. Um, you don't seem to have a thousand suns, but here's a Grey Knight Terminator for scaling. You see Wolverine's pretty pretty tall compared to a Grey Knight Terminator in this one. So scaling's about there. Base size is about the same. Like all of these guys have about the same size as a, uh, a little smaller than a uh, Terminator Space Marine. So... Not too bad, but ideally it's, it's a really nice model to paint, like the details there, the muscle tones, and again, you don't, you don't need a whole bunch of these models, and I believe the starter set is about 80 bucks to get into right now, and you get quite a bit of heroes and bad guys, and everything you need to play in that one box, again, that's just 80 bucks, um, whereas in like Games Workshop, you get $100, $200 just to do a two-player battle boxes. A little obscene to me um, especially for plastic but these ones here high quality miniatures um, overall you kind of get the minis you want like I just wanted Sabretooth and Wolverine this was about like I think 30 bucks so about $15 a model which is on average uh, approximately good for like hero units because uh, you're only about you only need like one of them so they got to make their money back somehow selling kind of single units and it's marvel we all kind of grew up with them we all love them so okay so i'm gonna go ahead enough talk gonna go ahead and try this yellow one uh wolverine here so gonna be brave and just kind of go for it and see how it goes out of this gray so hopefully i dry brushed well enough there um so it does have a lot of red tones in there from what i've seen um I can get the arms because the arms are pretty much, you know, always bared open. So it's just his main muscles. But yeah, you can tell it's, it is going on pretty yellow, which is good. Now I'm going to go ahead and get up in there. 
Um, not so much his pelvis, because I believe that one there is usually a blue. He's got like a blue, almost kind of like this just blue right here in the pelvis area. Where I was like a, I don't know, superhero undies on the outside. <laughs> I believe that's what they called it. Got his butt. It's and um, what's nice about Army Painter. This is, I tried the red, and it was a little hard for me to see it, but um, this co comes off quite a bit easy. So if you make a mistake or a boo boo, you could take it off right there. Now it's a little weird. There's no line kind of separating like the blue with yellow, uh, but I don't know. I don't really look at Wolverine in the back too much unless he's like kind of going after some uh, some villains something like that it's usually just like his cowl his face um, I went with just the hooded cowl look there just because he did have an alternate head so that's what's also nice you could have him without like the um, look so he could be more like Logan I guess and the yellow is going on really nice onto this kind of uh, base coat and I'm just kind of uh, slobbing it on I don't really have anything uh, thinned out. I mean, it's on a wet palette, but still, you know, just kind of hitting it up. Um, I'm not sure if it is blue on the butt, but uh, no, please forgive me if it is. Uh, it's been a while since I've seen this style Wolverine. I don't really read too much comics, but I did use. I did grow up watching the '90s show. As most kids my age have. And yes, I, I didn't really green stuff this one here. Because um, this was just more just kind of like uh, for me, for fan base. I, I'm just a big Marvel fan. But I should have just kind of green stuff some of those lines. I don't normally get all of them. But I know that's a pet peeve for some people. But yeah, I mean, it is what it is. Sometimes I just kind of want to just get to painting rather than worry about like using green stuff and everything but yeah so it is getting like a lot of the darker tones areas there um you can kind of pull it away you know from certain areas but ideally it's going to stay a little wet so i'm going to go ahead and hit this again because i don't think i got the abs pretty good um but ideally just kind of hitting it all up again here there's some parts that are a lot darker, like this part of his abs um, isn't getting a lot of yellow. Again, this is very kind of opaque, transparent kind of paint. So uh, the brighter color you have on there, the well, more well off you are. I was, you know, I'll just paint his butt yellow. Why not? Worst case scenario is I just go back and hit it with a blue. <laughs> I'm going to try painting him just mostly in contrast paints. Now, I'm just doing the Army Painter one for now. Uh, just because I would just want to see how the yellow works and it's looking pretty good uh, if you get too much like here where it starts getting kind of reddish orange just kind of get up in there and get that off I'm uh, kind of a little stickler when it comes to Ooh. sorry and go ahead at that out <laughs> a little stickler when it comes to the bubbles though so get rid of that as you can see, like this part right here, I'm gonna have to probably go back in with another yellow of some sort. But yeah, so I'll see how this goes. It's kind of like pulling away in certain areas, getting some orange in there, which gives you kind of that reddish tone, I guess. Um, I'm gonna let him dry a bit and see how that goes. Cause I thought I did a pretty good job dry brushing. But part of me feels like I didn't do such a good job dry brushing. But hey, um, I don't normally paint in yellow. But uh, I like the, you know, the darks in there. Is the highlights are up top and whatnot. That's where the dry brush kind of helps and comes in. It gets just kind of all the higher pointed areas, if anything. Um, always rinse your brush. I gotta get better, cleaner water. I um, didn't really get that here. All right. So go with this one here and we hit this Oop. 
uh, he's supposed to be brown there, but whatever. It'll be kind of an undercoat of yellow. Again, I'll, I'll do better with my other Marvel Crisis Pro call. I got another one, which I'll go ahead and kind of do it as a more of a TikTok video, but um, it's more of a simpler one, but I'll kind of get the seams a little better on the other one there. Um, these guys here, I think I'm going to try to make them more of, into, I guess, a, uh, a nice little base of um, what you call like a the kind of like an actual scene, like a di actual, my first, I'm going to try an actual first diorama and see how that goes. Now you see, it doesn't appear on black. Like it's too opaque to appear on black, but that's fine because his hands are brown. Um, not usually this yellow, but kind of hitting this up real quick here. See how this kind of goes on really. and captures on the gray, so... You get it on the yellow here on his legs. What's nice about this is it kind of, it's like one bottle for two heroes. I didn't really, well, what villain and a hero. Um, but seriously though, it's, it's a little goes a long way. I just did one little quick drop and I'm getting a lot of coverage with this here. Uh, it's just kind of spreading on. Uh, it's really nice kind of spread too. You can get his hair because he's blonde. That's going to be an interesting thing too to see how that hair texture turns out. Um, how that yellow turns out on the hair. But again, yeah, I just went, I just kind of treat it like a wash and try not to let the bubble stay I guess just be more you know determinant on that again I just kind of like where the darks are here the darks really control how strong the yellow comes out so that's why it's good to kind of prime your model first and then hit it with that gray dry brush or you could probably just do another prime of gray on top of it um, but ideally, I think the dry brush will get all the higher areas and leave you with the really dark areas there. So I'm not really too worried about Sabretooth. I'm going to get the these areas here, like the middle and his arms, more so with the brown again. I just kind of want to see how the yellow kind of sits uh, once it's done and dry. So we're going to let uh, these two guys here dry with the yellow just to see how it kind of spread out and whatnot once it's all done and said and done. Uh, I think Wolverine's starting to get there a little bit. And the yellow is kind of poking up pretty good. But I might have to do another layer of it to see there. But we'll see. I'll probably just hit it up real quick on the top here. Um, I think it does really good on like rounded surfaces. And get them on the leg there. But again, this might take a little while to dry, so we'll get back to it once it's all nice and dry, okay? All right, so update on these two guys here. I got nice saber tooth painted up, little yellows here. As you can see, it doesn't really get that the really dark areas. The really dark areas stay dark, and it comes in a little patchy in a sense. Um, light areas stay light. You can still remove some of the paint, though. And a little bit of water kind of reactivates that. And you can see it kind of went a little too light on the head there. Um, but ideally, if you do a really light undercoat, like maybe a white instead of gray, uh, you could probably get the yellow color on a little bit better there, okay? Um, you can see some of the areas get a really nice dramatic shade, like kind of like how the leg is there and how his back is. Um, kind of gets up in there, you know what I mean? But still a little patchy. I might just do another yellow uh, thing there. But it doesn't get in any of the areas that are black. So Sabretooth, I think, came out a little bit better with the yellow spread. Um, and you can see there on his abs. It's a lot better there. Um, still patchy just because I didn't like dry brush pretty well, I guess. Uh, but you can see this leg has nice little definition there. The areas stay nice and dark. Um, but still kind of grainy, um, just because I didn't really like kind of dry brush, dry brush 
But again, it get, gets through all the nice little details, little nooks and crannies. Um, just kind of gets it done, really. Uh, I like that UC yellow, but definitely needs a little lighter undercoat. Like the chest here, you could tell I really went in on the gray. So it really has a, like a pop to it there. So I'm probably going to go ahead and just uh, re-dry brush uh, Wolverine here and then redo the yellow and then uh, see how that comes out and uh, try that again. Um, but so far, the paint comes out really nice on them. Uh, you get it in one go, one drop, essentially gets all that yellow kind of covered. Okay, so not too bad. Um, I'm going to go ahead and try it again with Wolverine, though. Uh, just kind of just redo the dry brushing and then make it a little bit brighter. And then I'll get back and uh, show you guys what it'll look like once I uh, re kind of redo him a bit. Okay? All right. Well, I kind of forgot to uh, make another clip uh, for this kind of video right here. Um, <laughs> funny enough. So this is the finished product of uh, Wolverine here. I've used that Army Painter um, Speed Paints. The only problem is I had to really go over it with another yellow. Um, it's very transparent and it's very orange. Um, the Army Painter on the skin, however, turned out okay. But again, I had to use, you know, finish it off with another... Um, you know, type of paint. Um, the shoulders and arms, funny enough, I actually only used uh, the Games Workshop contrast paints, and that covered pretty much in one go. Um, I didn't really have to go over it again. Um, the only thing I really did was just kind of wet it a little bit on the edges here at the top, so it got smoothed it out a little bit there. Um, and then the black was just regular kind of paint. Uh, so for this yellow, to get this kind of rich type of yellow, I actually went and used some apple barrel paint. Sorry about that. So yes, apple barrel bright yellow. And just kind of dabbed it on anywhere he had like raised areas. You can see like right under his leg, there's still some shadow from the um, from that speed paint. Now, speed paint, I would say, is a good starting point for when you're going ahead and use it on a model. Um... And then you could just add highlights on there with like the brighter forms of paint right on the top. And I think it just turns out okay, you know. Um, the thing is like the reactivation on it, just wait till it like really dries before you start painting it. Because it will start to peel back a little bit there. That's kind of what I noticed. Um, I really enjoyed kind of using this paint. Um, it's a little bit pretty easy to do uh, and use. But in reality for... Uh, I would say you'd have to wait a little while for it to dry up. Um, again, the yellow does have a lot of orange in it, uh, which is, you know, just to get the dark edges. But it comes out really nice in the long run. You can see, like, kind of the little uh, folds in the back of his cowl here, which is a really nice detail there. Um, I didn't add any type of um, wash to this. It's strictly just, like, that paint and then... Uh, the apple barrel to just bring out that more yellow tone to it. Um, same thing with like the flesh here, like all of his skin. Um, it was just literally just to, their skin uh, speed paint. And then I just kind of went over with like a paler flesh on there. Because uh, their skin comes out, uh, the Crusader skin is uh, comes out a little uh, kind of washed out brown, which is a little weird. But it does get you these nice tones. Um, in those little crevices right there. So you can see that if you're doing a lot of kind of skin tones like this, like rippling muscles, then yeah, the Crusader skin, and then you put on whatever type of skin tone on top of it would be good. Again, I'm thinking the speed paints are more like a great starting point uh, to get your models going quicker, um, but the dry time might uh, push you back a little bit, but definitely skips the whole like shading step. Like I didn't even use any Nulin oil or any of that like, uh, any any type of um, shading really it just highlighting after that i think it's a good paint uh to start you off um definitely not like a one and done sort of deal um like a lot of people thought it would be um but I, again i just used yellow and like crusader skin i i still have a green one i haven't used yet but um definitely a good starting point it does get all of, essentially shading done for you um, I'm going to try white primer next uh, with just green and see how that goes for my Blood Bowl team. 
Um, but I appreciate you all for uh, watching. I'm at 50 subscribers now. Um, thank you very much. Uh, just hit that like button if you do like this video. And uh, tell your friends, subscribe and share. I uh, appreciate you all. And uh, check me out on my other platforms, Instagram, TikTok. And uh, I also have a Facebook page. Um, thank you all for watching. If you still are, and uh, never forget to never stop smiling. Take care.